I don't know how hot it is wherever you're living right now, but um, June in North Carolina, it is absolutely boiling outside. And my, my office up here, upstairs, is above a garage. And nevertheless, it uh, gets very hot in here. So I'm hoping I don't look like I'm sweating all over the place here. But uh, uh, anywho, I, uh, I was unpacking from a trip just uh, uh, last weekend. And you know, I was unpacking everything from my bag and I always lay it out on the table to clean anything or whatever, just make sure I don't leave anything behind. And I guess my OCD was kicking in a little bit and I started to go through and just count each individual item. And uh, I didn't complete the task. I got to around 25 or 28 different items and I stopped right there and I just started to kind of reflect on whether or not I actually needed to bring all of these items with me because the majority of them I didn't even use. And that, that thought kind of uh, segued into whether or not uh, I need to bring a lot of these things with me. So, you know, I, and I started to, you know, to think about, you know, what are the things that are most important to me, you know, equipment wise for landscape photography. And I, and I get a couple questions and I recently got one too. So it was very uh, timely where um, I, uh, someone was asking me exactly you know, what's, what is needed to, to get into landscape photography? You know, what are the, the must have, what's the essential pieces of kit to, um, to get into it? So I started to, to kind of dig into that a little bit. And I was thinking about, you know, what are the things that are most important to me? So I came up with, uh, you know, my, my 10 items of essential pieces of gear. If I could only travel with 10 things, what would they be? So and then this definitely isn't in any uh, order of importance or anything like that. And some of the, the, the gear I'm going to mention here, I'm using to film this video right now and I can't show you, but I'll, I'll cut in and overlay some B-roll just so you can take a look at that as well. But just to get some of the obvious things out of the way, you know, number one, you, you need a camera. You know, it, it, that's definitely probably the most important thing is a camera. It doesn't have to be a full frame camera. It can be crop sensor, micro four thirds. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is that it can shoot raw. That's the most important thing. So as long as you have a camera that can shoot raw, you're fine. It doesn't have to be a 40 megapixel beast or anything like that. 20 plus megapixels is perfectly fine. And if you're just getting into landscape photography, I would encourage you to, you know, try and get secondhand gear or, you know, buy used. It's definitely a great way to Test the waters a little bit. See if this genre of photography is for you. You know, before you you know push all the uh, the uh, proverbial chips into the pile and go all in. So uh, as long as you get a camera that shoots raw, you'll be fine. Second item is a good sturdy tripod. The majority of the time you're shooting landscape photography, it's going to be around sunrise or sunset, and definitely dimmer light environments. So. And you don't want to increase your uh, ISO and you introduce noise in your photo. So what do we do? We always, you know, string out that shutter speed as long as we possibly need to in order to get enough light for the to properly expose our image. So a good sturdy tripod is essential, preferably a lightweight tripod and one that is tall enough to where you don't have to constantly constantly be kind of hunched over because that's that's hell on your back after a while. I've been there. I've done that and it's no fun. So tall enough tripod for you and something that's lightweight because you're going to be carrying it a long distance too. So sturdy, lightweight, and tall enough. The third item is a, a solid ball head and one that's um, really one that you're comfortable with, one that you're confident in. Fle the, 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 you know, chasing light or being in, you know, and shooting during a sunrise and sunset, the perfect light is usually pretty fleeting moments. It doesn't, it doesn't last a long time. Sometimes it's short as maybe at one minute, maybe you're lucky and you get as, as much as 30 minutes of good light, regardless of how much time you have, it's not a ton of time. So you have to be able to be, you have to be able to be, you need to be confident in your ball head. You need to be able to make quick adjustments. And, and, and you don't have to, you don't want to have to worry about when you have it locked into place, if you have like a long lens on it, that the, the ball head starts to drift, drift down or, or, or not hold its position. So just a good solid ball head. There's nothing worse than the lights, right? And you're trying to recompose and you can't get your ball head, uh, you know, exactly where you need it and you miss your shot. So just a, a ball head that you're confident in using and that you're comfortable with is very important. Fourth item is an L bracket. Now this is something in it that I'm fairly passionate about. I actually posted a video uh, a month or two ago solely on the importance of L brackets, which I'll, I'll link above if you're interested in that. 
But this is something that I, I originally did not start using for probably a year, or maybe even more than that, 18 months into my photography journey. But once you start using an L bracket, the benefits are, are, are it's under, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm a little lost for words. It's 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 difficult to go back to using an L bracket once you've used one. So, and the benefit is very simple. It enables you to recompose your shot without it readjusting your ball head. So if you don't have an L bracket and you wanna go from a landscape orientation to a portrait orientation, you have to roll your ball head over. So your camera's like hanging off on one side and that's not good. It, it makes your tripod and your entire setup not as sturdy. And plus it changes your entire composition. So if you have an L bracket and you want to go from portrait orientation to landscape orientation, you just unlatch it from your ball head and flip it in whatever direction you're trying to transition to. And that's it. Your tripod is perfectly um, sturdy and centered as it was before. All the way to centered above your tripod, your composition remains the same. It's a lifesaver. So you definitely want to pick up a, a good L bracket. Now, my fifth item is a circular polarizer. Now, and this was tough. I was thinking about all the different, uh, you know, uh, the filters. I use ND grads and uh, neutral density fill, solid ND filters and then polarizers. But this is definitely the most important filter for me, mainly because, it, you know, polarizers are great for, uh, you know, kind of diffusing haze or mist that's in the air. And it's also great for uh, removing reflections. It also, you know, really saturates colors, especially greens and trees, trees and grass, or deepens the blue in the sky. But it, my favorite aspect of a, of a polarizer is just what it can, how it can cut down haze and what it does to reflection. So you definitely want to get yourself a, a quality polarizer. I wouldn't go super cheap on filters though, because if, if you go too cheap, you start getting kind of color casting, color shifts in your images, and you don't really want to do that. So. You definitely want to try and get a, a a good a good quality polarizer. Now, my sixth item is a remote shutter release. Now, what's interesting about this is I actually don't use this a whole lot. The only time I use a remote shutter release is when I'm shooting around water, which is I guess it, it it's less than the majority. So I don't know what that is. Maybe 40 45 percent of the time, but. When you are shooting around water, this is an absolute must have. Now, I usually shoot with a two second timer and I started to think about this. I, I posted a photo on Instagram, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago from a recent trip to Maui and I was just looking at it the other day and I was thinking back at the, 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 the morning that I shot that image, I, I left this precious piece of equipment in my hotel room and I was far enough away that it wasn't worth it to go back to get it. So I was down at the beach, I was shooting sunrise, and the light was getting good. It didn't last very long. It was a pretty flat lighting, cloudy morning, but it did get a little bit of color in the sky. And I ended up taking, I don't know, about 40 different shots when the, when the color was good to try and time it exactly right to get this one image. And I think I got lucky. I, I, I do like the wave action in this image of the, the detail, the waves going back out. But it was a little bit stressful and it's hard to time water two seconds in advance or any kind of moving anything really. So if you just had a remote shutter release, you can just, when the moment's right, you just hit the button and you're good to go. You don't have to time anything. So uh, this is definitely a, a crucial piece of gear uh, in my opinion. Now the, the next item, I forgot where I'm at on my count here. I think I'm on seven, seven. Yeah, seven. So 70 to 200 lens. This right here, you know, I was thinking about it. If there was two lenses I could bring, what would they be? I've, you know, and I've got, I think I've got maybe five or six different lenses. And if I had to pick two, 70 to 200 zoom is definitely one of the two lenses. I, I use this all the time. It's fantastic for, you know, if you're having a hard time with a particular composition, you can always strap this bad boy to your camera and just pick off distant details. It's great for, you know, shooting mountain mountain peaks that are, you know, shrouded in mist or fog or anything like that, or just anything in the distance. It's good to be able to have that additional reach to, um, you know, shoot something that's farther away from your camera than the normal. It's great for isolating subjects and the versatility in the zoom it is fantastic. This is definitely my uh, my favorite focal length for the, uh, the longer focal length. So I think you should get yourself a uh, definitely a good 70 to 200 zoom. And then the other um, 
uh, lens is a 16 to 35, which I'm filming on right now. That's my number one favorite lens. It's um, it, it's the perfect focal length for me. I used to shoot with a 25 millimeter prime, and I, I I like the optics of the lens, but it's definitely a little unforgiving as far from a as you know from a compositional aspect. You know, you're always constantly kind of recomposing because you, 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 there's no zoom, so you have to zoom with your feet, so you're moving around and everything. So, having a good 16 to 35 millimeter zoom is uh is a fantastic lens to get uh, mainly just because it's, it enables you to really clean up your composition to you know eliminate distractions you can go ultra wide you can punch in a little bit it's a lot of versatility uh, versatility so that's uh definitely a a massive benefit and then my my ninth must-have item is a good solid sd card holder I used to use this kind, this is a flexible kind, and I actually had an issue. I dropped something on it a few years ago. Uh, actually, I don't even recall exactly what it was, but uh, anyway, it, it cracked one of the SD cards. Ever since that happened, I've been using one of these Pelican cases. These are fantastic, very solid, waterproof, hard shelled case. It, it would be tough to have any kind of damage occur to any of your SD cards while it's in here. and. You know, at the end of the day, th this is what it's all about. These SD cards. Everything we're out there doing is all going to get stored on one of these SD cards. So keeping these safe is imperative. So I would definitely invest in one of these. They're, they don't cost much, and it's well worth the protection. And my final item, my tenth most essential piece of gear, is just a good quality pack. You know, it doesn't matter what bag it is, as long as it's comfortable for you, and as long as it'll carry all your kit, because you're going to be more than likely hiking longer distances and carrying a decent amount of weight. So it's got to be comfortable. I don't care what kind of bag it is, but as long as it's, you know, when I'm looking for a bag, it's comfortable and carrying everything. That's ultimately the most important thing. So whether you're spending $500 on your bag or if you're spending $50 on the bag, it doesn't matter. If you think it's comfortable and it carries what you need, that's what matters. So that's my 10, you know, essential pieces of kit for landscape photography. I, I hope the video was uh, informative. I know if you shoot, if you shot landscape photography for years, a lot of this stuff is very, uh, probably basic information to you. But uh, for those looking to get into it, I hope the video was um, informative. If you have any questions, definitely just leave me a comment below and I guarantee I'll get back to you. I'll leave uh, links to everything uh, in the description as well. So if you want to dig into any of the uh, information online, you can definitely do that as well. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you all next week. Bye.